Hi, I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager with Furuno. And today, we're on a Volvo Penta IPS boat. This boat is a 43-foot Silverton, and we're going to show you our new Volvo Penta IPS interface for the NavPilot 700 series. In front of you, we have a bunch of components. This is a new Furuno TZ Touch 14-inch display, as well as a NavPilot 711 control head, and all the components you'll need to configure and install the Volvo Penta IPS system with the NavPilot 700 on this boat. This boat already has the installation, so what we're going to do is quickly show you how to configure everything, how to connect everything together, then we're going to go through the software configuration in the NavPilot 700 series uh, software, and then we're going to actually go out and do a quick, street, a quick sea trial and show you just how well our engineers have made this system work on this Volvo Penta boat. Okay, in front of us right now, we have some of the components you're going to need to install the system. Okay, and in this case we have the most important component, or one of the most important components, and that's the multi-link cable that you're going to actually use to install. And this is how we're going to get the data out of the Volvo Penta system. So when you get on the boat, you're going to have this multi-link cable. And this is just a breakout cable, so what we'll do is we'll find what's called the EVC, which is the Electronic Vessel Control Computer on the boat and it's usually under the console it's pretty easy to get at so you'll actually go into the console find that EVC computer and you'll see a multi-link cable coming out of it and what we'll do is we'll disconnect the existing connectors that are there and we're gonna put this breakout cable in between those two connectors so it's really pretty simple it's just two six connector male female uh, sockets that we'll use to inject this cable right into the system and once we do that, be careful that you don't use this gray cable because this gray cable goes out to what's called the Volvo Penta uh, engine gateway or the, excuse me, the uh, autopilot gateway. So in the autopilot gateway is part of the system and that's what we'll do. So we'll break out, the, we'll break out this cable and connect this breakout cable into the Volvo Penta gateway, com gateway com little computer right here. Okay, and then that's basically all the system has in terms of how we interface to the actual Volvo Penta system. What we'll do then is we'll just add our uh, IPS interface, and this is a Furuno IPS interface that you'll get when you actually buy the Volvo Penta uh, NavPilot 700 system. And you'll, what you'll do is you'll take what's called a, this gateway and plug it into the CAN bus port on this computer, on this little uh, I, IPS computer. Boom. Once we do that, we plug that in and we supply power from uh, the ship's mains into this system and run this other cable over into the NavPilot 700 series processor. And that's the total installation. There's no more than that. Uh, all the um, engine information, all the uh, rudder information, all the steering information is supplied through these three components into our processor unit and we're done. So that's the basic installation of the system besides the autopilot, the autopilot control head and the processor unit. So what I'm going to do now is actually go through just the software configuration of this system. And you'll find that it's really simple too. So when I have the NavPilot 700 turned on and enabled in front of me, I'll go through the basic setups just like uh, setting up the units and actually selecting the language just like I would with a normal NavPilot 700 installation. But the one difference is, when you get to the ship's characteristics page, you'll see with this new software in the NavPilot 700, you'll see that now there's a selection for a Volvo Penta IPS boat. So to get into the installation menu, if you haven't done it before, it's really pretty simple. All I do is go to the, and either the NavPilot 700 or the 711 control head, press and hold the turn button, and then press the rotor key three times. It's a little hard, difficult because I'm backwards on this system, but the important thing to understand is that I just go down to ship's characteristics and press enter, okay? And then you'll see here the boat type is Volvo Penta IPS. So, you know, we already have the planing and semi-displacement boat where we have our also our, our new phantom mode that you can select, but in this case, of course, we have rudder angle information from the Volvo Penta system, so I'll just go down and select the Volvo Penta EVC boat, and that's it. I'm done. The only thing I really have to do now is go down and configure the boat length. In this case, we have a 43-foot boat, and 
the cruising speed is roughly 20 knots with this boat, so that's pretty good. Don't forget that the Nav Pilot 700 is a learning autopilot, so even if these numbers are off slightly, the, the autopilot will still learn the boat no matter what. Okay. The next selection you'll do is just go down and set up your rate of turn, which is how the boat turns from waypoint to waypoint, or when you turn, use the, uh, the knob to turn from court, you know, set the course heading, and that's all. Um, the rest of the sense, uh, installation with the NatPilot 700 with respect to uh, interfacing either an 0183 uh, heading sensor or an 0183 component or sending uh, information out to an 0183 component or the NMEA 2000 installation is all the same. There's no rudder setup anymore. There's no uh, rudder angle uh, information that you have to configure. All that's done by the Volvo Penta system. So this really makes the installation quite simple. Okay. Uh, from there, we're actually going to go and do a quick sea trial just to show you how well this boat steers with the new NAPILOT 700 system installed.